In this video, I'd like to do a brief introduction of breadboard and how it can be used to quickly prototype new experiments. When you first log into breadboard, you'll come to the design console, which is a place where you can design and run your experiments. You can use the script engine to interact with the in-memory graph. The script engine is backed by the Groovy scripting language, so you can do things like this basic hello world program. which returns hello world, or more complicated things like summing the integers between 1 and 100. But most importantly, you can interact with the graph, which is represented by the object G. Currently, the graph has zero vertices and zero edges. So let's go ahead and add some vertices. Each vertex represents one player in your game. Let's add some structure. So for instance, we could arrange all the vertices in a grid. There are lots of these built into breadboard. For this demo, I'm going to be programming a public goods game. In a public goods game, each player can either cooperate or defect with their neighbors. If they cooperate, they pay a fixed cost, let's say 50 points, for each neighbor they're connected with, in order to give each neighbor a payoff, which is multiplied. So let's say 100 points for each neighbor. If they defect, then they don't change their own points or the points of their neighbors. For this game, let's use a random graph, where each possible edge exists with a probability. Let's go a little bit less than that. Let's try 0.15. A little less than that. Let's try 0.1. That looks pretty good. All right, so the first thing we need to do is uh, we need to access each vertex in the graph, which is G dot capital V. And you see them down here. And then for each vertex, we're going to iterate through them. We'll call each vertex V and we're going to affect their properties. So we'll give them a starting score. Let's say a thousand points. And let's give them a property called cooperation. This is going to track whether they cooperated or defected in the last round. Let's set cooperation to the default value of zero to start. And I select a vertex. You'll see that its score and cooperation are set to 1,000 and 0. You may have noticed that each vertex changed to gray. And the reason for that is that I have style set up here, where if the node's cooperation is 0, then the fill of the circle will be gray. But if the node's cooperation is 1, it will be green. Or if it's negative 1, it will be red. So we can go ahead and test that out. Let's change this cooperation to 1 for all the vertices. And they all change green. So the next thing we needed to do is give each player the choice to either cooperate or defect. So to do that, we'll use the player actions object, which is represented by A. 
And for each player, we're going to add an action. And an action is made up of one or more choices. So in this case, we need two. Each choice has a name and a result. Uh, the first choice we'll call cooperate, and the second choice we'll call defect. Let's do the result for defect first. If you defect, your cooperation will be set to negative 1. The result of cooperating is a little bit more complicated. First, let's set your cooperation to 1. And then we need to reduce your score by 50 points for each neighbor you're connected with. So we can access the collection of neighbors of that vertex by v.neighbors, and we'll count them. Finally, we need to add 100 points to each of those neighbors. So again, we'll get the collection of neighbors We'll iterate through them. Let's call them n. And then for each neighbor, let's add 100 points to their score. All right, so let's run this. And now if I click around in the graph, you'll see that there is a cooperate and a defect button for each player. So for instance, this player has three neighbors. So if I choose to cooperate, they're going to pay 150 points, 50 times 3, and they're left with a score of 850. Their cooperation property is set to 1. And if I look at his neighbors, each one of them has a score of 1,100. If one of his neighbors chooses to defect, then his score remains the same and his cooperation property is set to negative 1. And the score of his neighbors remain the same as well. So that all seems to work. And I could click around and play a game all by myself, but I'm not going to do that. Instead, let's add some artificial intelligence to the nodes and let them play by themselves. So let's iterate through the vertices again. And let's add some AI to each of the nodes. And you see that the AIs are going to make random choices and play the game by themselves. So in a few lines of code, we've programmed a basic public goods game.